what's up everybody i'm the layman and it's time for my ruby volume 5 analysis because that's basically what i'm doing with these videos and today we are going to be checking out episode 4 necessary sacrifice i totally did not just look at the title on my on my second monitor or anything but yeah not a lot not a lot of action in this episode necessarily but very interesting portents. So let's let's get into it. And and a nice and a nice bit where I'll get to that. I'll get to that. So so with this one we start basically with Weiss and Son going out and campaigning. Like 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 the trying to get people to sign a petition campaigning. <laughs> and it's honestly a little bit kind of a little bit humorous to see in a show that's basically all about, you know, fighting and looking cool and everything and big spectacles, but they do that. They're you know, the purpose behind that being they're trying to uh, gauge support for Ge Gear's desire to go help Haven Academy, which goes about as well as you expected with apparently them getting none signatures. And yeah, after, after which they're sitting at a little, sitting having a some some coconut milk or something to drink. Something it's in a coconut. Also, I, I see you wanted to show off your your liquid physics there, Rooster Teeth. Don't think I didn't notice that. And Blake is basically <laughs> playing the exposition bot and explaining to Son why it, why that went so poorly and. Even a little bit about about her and Ilya, and how and how she wants to actually help her. So that'll be interesting to see. Although I doubt I doubt Blake will be able to randomly pop up pop up outside of Ilya's window for apparently no reason, <laughs> claiming that yes she does climb trees all the time. That scene is hilarious, and I will never not like it. And. That was ba that was basically the first part. That was, in broad strokes, what happened there. This episode is told in basically three parts. Smash cut to the second part where, where we enter on Oscar, you know, like getting in some private pra some practice in on his own with, the, you know, actually being able to fight. When when Ruby comes in and tells him that it's time for dinner. And this kind of very abruptly breaks out into well no what what causes the feels moment to happen here is when when Oscar asks if how how Ruby's able to handle everything that's been happening to her and she she basically let let's slip that no let me back up a bit Oscar's worried that he can't might not be up to snuff like the rest of them are, and Ruby assures him that he will be combat ready in no time. Which, of course, that is what triggers the feels. And the th and millions of fans are crying, and their tears are delicious, by the way. And which basically du ducktails off into <laughs> Ru Ruby do Ruby doing an Oscar scene, not not the big over dramatic Oscar scene, but the kind that. It, the kind that like it, it's clearly her monologue, and and she and somehow through that she manages to, I guess, reassure Oscar with whatever he was having doubts about. Uh, pardon me. And he and Osmond have have a little conversation after she after she leaves because you know, otherwise Nora's gonna eat all the food again. They they have a little conversation about, you know, Ruby, Ruby and and how extraordinary she is, given given everything that's been happening to her, and that that's basically everything in that scene. That then we cut back to again menagerie, but in a different part. This is this is this is the uh, menagerie chapter of the White Fang's headquarters. 
and yeah, we yeah, it's those two guys in in the weird jackal like hoods, which I really can't be bothered to remember their names at all. They I really don't care enough. They probably won't exist past the next volume, anyways, if even this one. But yeah, they basically are talking to Ilya, chameleon girl, and telling her that they've got another assignment for her, and it's basically political assassination. But don't worry, she she won't be the only one doing this. There'll be other people there to help. But but that her connection to to the Belladonna is it makes her a crucial part of this particular operation. And we can absolutely see the seeds of doubt just shoot straight up like a magic freaking beanstalk inside of Ilya at that because you know her and Blake used to be friends, which Blake previously explained in her scene. And yeah, yeah, that that that's totally gonna turn out completely well, absolutely. And yeah, and that scene basically ends with a brief holographic message from Adam. Clearly, still mentally sound, completely. He he's not running off of his own agenda at all. He he's not letting his emotions control him whatsoever. Yeah, and and basically the the whole message of that scene was. Shut it. And that that's about where this volume ends. And like I said, not a lot of action, but. There's clearly they're clearly setting up for the for the big conflict. How like how many how many different sides are going to clash with each other and whether or not this will facilitate the rest of Ruby meeting each other again because we we already have Weiss and Yang reunited with each other in in her mom's bandit camp. And, but Blake is still off in menagerie and Ruby's still holed up in Haven, so so I wonder if and how all that is going to converge with the, with itself. And I was actually talking to some some of my friend some of my Ruby fan friends who all well I don't know if they've seen the episode but it was speculated that someone's probably going to die in this episode aside from Sienna Khan who unfortunately bit the her character design bit the dust in the last episode <laughs> rip Sienna's character design. And judging by the way all the pieces are falling together in th in this episode, and how and how it looks like they're gonna shape up going forward, you might want to uh, spend some time with Ilya, like be <laughs> before the climax, because she she un un underneath her underneath her combat suit, whatever the he whatever the heck that kind of outfit is called, she's probably wearing a red shirt. Or, or at the very, very least, red boxers. Because <laughs> if you catch my meaning. And and no, it's not the gross thing you all. I know you all are thinking of. So get that out of your minds right now. Y'all, people in culture need to watch Star Trek. Anyhow. So the, yeah, this was a fairly simple, low key episode, all things considered. But it's definitely. Things are, and it was actually kind of light on humor, all, all things considered, but makes me really interested to see how things are going to play out in the next episode, especially with the, the Yang and Y stuff, which has not been cut back to or referenced yet. And we were finally making progress on that, on that, on that story thread from the volume two stinger. No, I will never get over that. Not until that's conclusively answered. I want to know what that freaking was. I will find out one day, even if I have to ring the answer out of Miles and Carrie's necks myself. But that's a uh, that's a uh, <laughs> that's if I ever actually make it to R to RTX, which hopefully hopefully next year I'll be able to do that. But until then, also also this wasn't a World of Remnant episode. I, now I kind of actually want one because okay, I, I want to learn more about this world and the backstory and. This, this stuff and the social economics and whatever else have you. So I hope the next one's actually a World of Remnant episode. We th This seems like a pretty good pause point for the plot to actually focus on, you know, a little bit of external world building. Anyway, that's about all my thoughts. <laughs> hope you guys had fun with this one and I will see you in the next one, whether it be more plot or World of Remnant.
<laughs> ne until next time. There's a day when I